Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. Commonwealth leaders have gathered in Windsor for a second day of discussions about the future. Today, the government indicated it would welcome Zimbabwe's re-entry to the club after Robert Mugabe pulled the country out in 2003. Well, the summit's focusing on the environment, trade and security, but behind closed doors, discussions continue on whether Prince Charles should succeed the Queen as head of the Commonwealth. Yesterday, she said it was her sincere wish, of course, that he should take over on the day. Now, diplomatic correspondent James Landell sent this report from Windsor. Well, our royal correspondent Johnny Diamond is in Windsor for us. Uh, Johnny, there are reports just coming in then that uh, the Prince of Wales will succeed the Queen. What can you tell us? Arsene Wenger's to leave Arsenal at the end of the season, ending a near 22-year reign as manager. His decision to stand down brings to an end one of the longest tenures at the head of a top-flight club, during which the Gunners won three Premier League titles and seven FA Cups, including the double, of course, in 1998 and 2002. They are, though, now sixth in the league and are set to miss out on a top-four spot for the second straight season. People in Salisbury have been warned there could still be dangerous levels of the nerve agent left in the city after the poisoning of a former Russian spy and his daughter last month. At a public meeting last night, a senior government scientist told residents that nine locations had to be decontaminated. Local people have expressed frustration that parts of the city have still not been reopened to the public, but specialists say work to clean up the sites may take months. Officials insist Salisbury is still safe to visit, as our Home Affairs correspondent Daniel Sanford reports. The EU's chief Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, has warned that there is still a chance that talks on Britain's withdrawal deal from the bloc could fail. Mr Barnier said that while three quarters of the deal had been agreed, the Irish border issue remained a key stumbling block. When our correspondent Gavin Lee is in... Now, the National Trust needs to be more radical and reach out to people living in cities. That's the view of the charity's new director general, who says she wants to work with people in urban areas to help it become more relevant. In her first interview since getting the job, Hilary McGrady said the people need, that need beauty the most are the ones that have least access to it. Well, she was speaking to our correspondent, Claire Marshall. A BBC reporter has told the High Court that he had an understanding with a senior detective over the police search of Sir Cliff Richard's home in August 2014. Officers launched an investigation after receiving an allegation of sexual assault. The singer was never arrested or charged. Our correspondent, Helena Lee. The world's first global cancer database has been launched by an Australian billionaire. Patients will be asked to hand over their health records to the Universal Cancer Data Bank, which will share information about emerging new treatments. The former Labour Minister, Dame Tessa Jow, who has an aggressive brain tumour, has become the first person to sign up, as our health correspondent, Catherine Burns, reports. Now, memos written by the sacked former FBI director, James Comey, about his meetings with President Trump have been published. The notes provide details of his allegation that the president asked him to drop an investigation into a former national security adviser. Donald Trump says the memos show there was no attempt to obstruct justice. Well, in his first UK interview, Mr Comey's given Emily Maitlis his thoughts on the Trump presidency. James Comey speaking to uh, Emily Maitlis there. Now, the chief executive of Barclays is facing a fine after UK regulators found he'd broken conduct rules when he tried to unmask an internal whistleblower at the bank. Just say... This Sunday's London Marathon promises to be one of the hottest in the history of the event. Organisers have warned runners to take precautions with temperatures forecast to exceed uh, 20 degrees. But anticipation is running high for uh, many other reasons. Among them, Mo Farah is competing in the men's race for the first time since quitting his track career. As our sports correspondent Joe Wilson reports.